um, turn my image on. And for right now, I'll just go ahead and I'm just going to delete this. I already have it. Um, but if I wanted to then draft it, I can just go ahead and draw, and you'll notice that it snaps exactly now to this dock. Now we have to make a decision here is that obviously you know it's not perfect so we have to decide whether we want to believe the aerial and continue to rotate or if we want to just keep that straight for this purpose. For this purpose I think it's more important that even if the aerial is slightly off, if we have a slight tilt, that what we want to do is keep everything oriented. It's important that uh, the way this would be built in real life is that this would be straight, this would be a 90 degree corner, this would be a 90 degree corner. So when we draft we want to make sure that even if it's just a teeny, teeny tiny bit off, uh, we want to just go ahead and keep that line straight. So same thing goes for down here. We can go ahead and draft that line. We can come up. We've got a little bit of a bulb, a little bulb out, and we can come back. I'm not really sure what's going on, whether that's a hard surface or not. So I may just kind of um, assume that that's a boat and pull that in. <clears throat> you notice we've got a couple different levels. We've got kind of an upper level and a lower level. So I may want to reflect that in my drawing again. I'm just going to ignore that curve. I'm just going to ignore the fact that that curves. And I'm going to come back, and you'll notice that everything is now snapping because I have my ortho on. It's all snapping to right angles. Now, one thing we did, uh, one thing we want to do also when we're drafting is if we have a line over here and we started to trace, we want to make sure that this line is the same as this line. So we can do a couple different things. We can go ahead and draw a line and we can then start our new line over there. Um, or what we can do is, um, or we can draw another line and then offset it because we know that we know that we want to essentially do a mirror image of this. So if we checked to see how far apart those were, and I've got that at 12 feet. Um, we want to try and keep everything, of course, when you're drafting to regular dimensions as much as you can. Now you may trace this and it might be 11 feet, three inches and three and two quarter inches, inches or something, some um, decimal point or something like that. But in this case, if we know that it's close to 12 feet, I can just type in di for dimension and I can just go ahead and grab the dimension and it, right there it tells me it's really you know 11 feet 9 inches I may decide in this case just to round it up and say I'm just gonna round it to 12 feet so if I had a line here I can type in O for offset and it asks me down here the distance what's the distance I want 12 feet and I can click on the line I just drew and you can see that it's telling me which direction do you want to go, left, or do you want to go right, I want to go right. And then now I know, because I've offset this, I know that, that this edge and this edge are all equal. So this is the same distance, this is all hitting at the same point. So when I draw my new line, um, I want to make sure that again, that I'm not just you know arbitrarily drafting, I'm thinking as I'm drafting how it might work in the real world. Of course, what I've just done is corrected this though. Now that this one I've drawn originally was too high, I brought that down a little bit lower. We've got a couple different options. In this case, what I want to do is just type in the TR for trim. And I want to trim both these two corners. This one, so TR trim, enter, or return. And I want to trim both of those corners, and now I'm left with a straight line. So that can be erased. Um, you can hit delete, or just E, enter, for erase. And now we've got rid of that one. So if we turn our image off, you'll see that we're left with um, we're left with something that looks really nice and straight and clean and relatively equal. Same thing applies to here. I drew this really quick. So another way to do that is if you didn't want to trim it, you could just draw a line straight down and say, oh, I drew this really quick. Um, in real life, that should probably be aligned. Uh, it's not. So in this case, what I can do is I can actually select, um, I can select those lines and you'll notice the little blue grips come up. Those are the hot grips. What we're gonna do is um, hold down shift select each of the grips until they turn red and then um, let go of shift and then click the hot grip and you know it's allowing you to stretch it so now I can stretch this line to any direction I want I want to stretch it until it snaps you'll notice that little um, little yellow kind of L shape comes up that means it it's perpendicular so I want to snap it so that it's perpendicular so it snaps just right in place so again if I deleted that line uh, it was only used for reference. I can now, I know that this and this would be aligned. So that's, um, again, good drafting technique. Uh, one thing I realized is that I was, I was not paying attention. I drafted on my tree layer. And that's okay, it's not a big deal, but we want to make sure that when we're done drafting that we get it to the right layer. 
So if we're switching between different layers and we're drafting different things, we want to make sure that we're drafting on the same layer, so um, on the proper layers. So if, if you don't do it, if you don't make the right layer your active layer, before you draft, you have to go back and do an extra step, which is to match properties. So in this case, I want to match the properties of the paving. So I can type in MA, and right there it says match prop. And then I'll, it's asked me to select my source object. That's going to be the paving layer. And then once, and then once I've done that, it, it selects, and then a little paintbrush comes up, and it says select your destination object. So my destination object is um, this dock that I just drew. So you can do that a couple different ways. You can select it a line at a time, but obviously that would take a little while. So a really quick way to do that would be just to click off of the lines and drag it so that you're selecting everything at once. So everything that I just drew on the tree layer, I'm selecting, and it's now turning red. It's now on what I'm calling the paving layer. Of course, that could be on its own layer, it could be on a dock layer if you wanted it to be. So that was match properties, that was ortho. We did the UCS, um, we did the underscore plan, which is rotating the view to align with the UCS, and we drew some lines, uh, we trimmed, we offset, or offset, uh, and then of course we stretched using the hot grips. So there was a few different commands that we did just to draw this little piece here. So I'm going to go back, I want to rotate real quick, so I'm going to type in, I want to type in UCS, and it's going to ask me all these options, and of course I want to go back to where we started, which is world, that was the default, so I'm going to type in W for world, or just hit enter, because world is already showing, um, it's already saying world, so hit enter. Notice my crosshairs rotated again, it went back to uh, north up, and then again I'm just going to type in the word plan again. It's going to ask me what do you want, do you want world or do you want current? Well, in this case, I know that my current is world, so I can just go ahead and um, hit current. Or if it was not, if your current was not set to world, then you would maybe want to type in world. In this case, I just hit enter. And we're back to square, we're back to, to up and down. Because um, we've got a tilted site plan, so I think it's important to be able to go back and forth. So one thing, looking at this parking lot, now unfortunately, landscape architects do a lot of parking layouts, which is not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's important to get right. Um, so it's important to understand actually how wide lanes and parking stalls are in order to be able to do this correctly. So that's what these center lines are for. So the center lines are representing the center of the drive aisle, so where the cars would be driving. And from there what we would do is offset. So in this case, I'll just do a little double check and I'll see, I'm going to type in my dimension. So now this can be a little bit narrower because this is a one-way. So a typical drive lane from, if this was a two-way, this would not be enough space, it's eight foot six inches. Um, what we would need is 12 feet per lane. Um, so from here to here would be 24 foot, that's only if it was 90 degree parking, in this case it's angled. So what we can do is double check and we can see that we're at 17 feet. So if we know we're at 17 feet, you can always offset. If you draw a center line at the center of your parking stall, um, and you know what I'm going to do for this example? I'm going to turn off what I've already done. Uh, and I will just turn my image on. And we'll just leave the trees on. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm just going to call this L demo, just because it's um, temporary. And I'll make that cyan so it stands out from some of the other layers. Now, cyan, and I'm going to make that my current layer. So I'll make active or set current. So one thing we do is we want to start by making sure my ortho is turned off, command L. I'm going to hit L, enter for line. And I'm going to draw a line between this parking stall and what I think of is the end of this parking stall. So somewhere between here and here. And again, I'm trying to make it, and then I'm going to draw a line between the end of, say, this parking stall. And if you went straight across, you would find that this line would be right about here. Again, we're just kind of getting as close as we can. 